Over the past 10 years, graduation mass has become a beautiful tradition at Holy Cross Catholic Academy. In any typical year, St. Peter's Church in Woodbridge would be filled on a June evening to capacity with graduating students joined by their families and friends in celebration. But this is no typical year, and because of pandemic restrictions, we are not allowed to gather at this time to honor our graduating grade 12 students in person. But we are together in spirit virtually united to proudly honor the 209 students who will be leaving our school community to take on new challenges and to embark on new adventures. This world needs and awaits your energy, creativity and talents. Today we pray for you all and ask God's blessings and protection upon you. Let us welcome our celebrant the Reverend Father Michael Corcione. Hello everyone, yes, it's Father Mike, I'm still alive. Put a little bit of poundage on these last couple of months. I know it's been a long time since we've seen each other. Hopefully you've been watching um, on, the, on the internet, watching our live stream from St. Peter's, but welcome to our graduation mass for Holy Cross. And we'll begin our celebration as always in the, with the sign of our salvation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, um, and my brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirits so are coming together as God's family this day, we take an opportunity once again to welcome everyone, no matter where you are watching this. Hopefully you're not in your pajamas. I'm sure you've been out here. Hopefully you're not. Um, we welcome all of you and your family and friends for this celebration. We'll begin our celebration tonight, or this day, as always, in the silence of our hearts. First of all, to thank God for the blessings that he gives to us each and every day, blessings of our, our families and our friends, the gift of life itself that God gives to us, and the gift of eternal life he promises us. We'll also begin our celebration in the silence of our hearts to ask God for his peace and his forgiveness. We recognize our sins, our weaknesses and frailties, and need for God's mercy in our daily lives. So let's begin our celebration in the silence of our hearts to thank God, but to also ask Him for His peace and His forgiveness, recognizing God as a Father full of gentleness and compassion. And so we say, Lord Jesus, for the times we may fail to love and serve God, our Father above all things in our daily lives, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, for the times we may fail to love our neighbors as ourselves, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the times we may fail to love and respect ourselves and all the gifts that you entrust to us in this life, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let us pray. So the, our Mass is being offered for all of the graduates of the class of 2020 um, at Holy Cross. So God our Father, you are the giver of all good gifts. You surround us in this world with the beauty of creation and, and invite us to walk in your presence every day. As we come to the end of our time together at Holy Cross, let us be thankful for all we have achieved through you. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we have our readings. We have a very special guest, Mr. Mignello. We found him on the street somewhere. We asked him to invite him to come and offer other readings today. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them. A time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. 
a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. I have considered the tasks which God has appointed for people to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timelessness into their hearts without men's ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognize that there is nothing better than to be glad and to do well during life. For every person, moreover, to eat and drink and enjoy the fruit of all his labor is a gift of God. I recognize that whatever God does will endure forever. There is no adding to it or taking from it. This God has done that he may be respected. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who live in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. Be with, Be me, with Lord, me, Lord, when, when I, I am in trouble. trouble. No evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your tent. For to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you in all your ways. Be with, Be with me, me, Lord, when, when I, am, I in am in trouble. Upon their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the asp and the viper. You shall trample down the lion and the dragon. Be with, Be me, with Lord, me, Lord, when, when I, I am, am in trouble. trouble. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. Be with, be me, with Lord, me, Lord, when, when I, I am in trouble. in trouble. A reading from the letter of James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it, until it receives the early and late rains? You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about 14 kilometers from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Clopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. And, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. 
They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, saying, It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon Peter. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, congratulations are welcome to and congratulations to all of our class, class of 2020 on behalf of Mr. Lavore, our principal, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Collins and Ms. Monaco on behalf of our, all the teachers and all the staff, uh, the admin at Holy Cross, we say congratulations to all of you, uh, the class of 2020. I guess the first thing that we probably should say is, wow, <laughs> everything's changed. We missed so much, and yet we kind of got back to basic things. We got back to basic things. You'll never forget 2020, that's for sure. You'll never forget 2020. Um, it's sad that there were a lot of things that we had to miss out this year. Um, not only the prom and graduation and things like that, the passion play. We missed the passion play after 18 years. This was the first year that we missed it. So um, it's sad that we had to miss that, but we did it for safety pur pur purposes. So hopefully you recognize that. Um, who would have thought a couple of months ago, this is what would have happened and it would have lasted so long. But as the old saying goes, it is what it is. It is what it is and we just have to deal with it, okay? And we're dealing with it quite well. It's almost over, so to speak. Now for most of you sitting out there, wherever you're sitting and watching this, this is the end for most of you. It's the end, okay? It's the end of the class of 2020 um, at Holy Cross. and. Um, on a personal note, I'm very proud of you. I've always been proud of the students of Holy Cross. Um, I think, um, I th as, they, as they say, when you get older, the, the less the kids seem to be uh, effective in things. I, the, the older I get, the more I think you guys are getting better and better every year. Um, but congratulations to the year, to the class of 2020. Uh, free at last, free at last. Thank God we are at last, we are free at last, right? Okay, and I know you're very, very excited. So congratulations once again to all of you for all of your achievements, uh, not only this year, but all the years past. So the next stop, of course, is tomorrow. Tomorrow is the next stop. And next week and next month and next year and all the years that you, as a matter of fact, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This past week, I was reminded from our classmates from high school, I graduated from high school 41 years ago. <laughs> 41 years ago. And we're still in contact with, us, with many of our classmates. Um, but a wise old Al once told me that you went to elementary school to find out what you know, and you went to high school to find out what you don't know. Hopefully you realized in high school you didn't know a lot, okay? And there's a lot more to learn in life. And then after that, certainly, it's all up to you. It's all up to you, right? But before we go, we'd like to offer you some a little bit of friendly advice to take with you, okay? To take with you on this long journey you'll call life, okay? Just a little bit of advice. And it's not gonna come from me, of course. Um, as a matter of fact, it's gonna come, you just already heard it. 
Mr. Mignello read those readings. Wonderful bits of advice for you to take with you as you move along into the next part of your journey of your life, okay? It comes from the scriptures. Now, we're talking thousands of years ago. Scriptures that hold wisdom for us even today, even in these difficult times. It comes from really good, this really good advice. The first part comes, and the first piece of advice comes something like this. Um, everything has its time. Everything has its time. The book of Ecclesiastes, that I tell people usually, I remind them, that was written several thousand years ago by people who lived in caves. People who lived in caves said, there's a time for everything. There's a time for war, there's a time for peace, there's a time for shaking hands and not shaking hands, there's a time for hugs and no hugs, this is a time for no hugs. But there's a time for everything. And at this particular time, this is your time. This is your time. And our time. My time. But in particular, your time. A beginning part of his time. And there's a plan, okay? There's a plan. Now, we may not seem to think that so, so well because we, we, there's a plan for God. Is this all part of God's plan? Well, it could be. It could be. That plan definitely involves you, though. It definitely involves you. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking just because I don't understand the plan or I don't like the plan that there is no plan <laughs> because I don't understand it. I'm not God. You're not God. I wasn't there at the beginning, and I won't be there at the end, and neither will you. That's what God's plan is all about, okay? There's a beginning and there's an end. And the book of Ecclesiastes tells us that each of us participates in that in our own time. Each and every generation participates in that every single day of their lives. This is you, right? It doesn't mean that there isn't one out there. I just leave it to God. Life is an adventure. Life is an adventure, okay? Stay close to God. Don't wander off. I heard someone the other day say, you know, since the beginning of time, Adam and Eve, meaning us, we've been hiding from God because we knew we were naked, and then we say, where's God? We hide from him and then ask where he is. Don't do that to God. Don't do that to God. Be present to God. Look for his presence in your life. Let God lead you. But am I willing to be led? Okay. It's nice to call Jesus the good shepherd, but if it's just another nice name, if he doesn't lead me, okay? The second bit of his advice kind of goes like this. It's very, very close, okay? Very close to the first bit. And it goes something like this. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient with your life. Be patient with God. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with others. Be patient with the plan that God has. Let the plan unfold every single day. I don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow. I can plan for tomorrow, but that doesn't mean to know that everything's going to work out in the way that I plan it. I have to assume that somehow, some way, even in the challenges of my life, that somehow, some way, those challenges help me to grow. Life isn't like, on the plan isn't like this, a flower, like it just opens up like that. Life is, it comes out, like a flower opens up in stages. And that's how your life is going to be. The letter of James that we heard in that second reading that Mr. Raniello read, he said, be like the farmer. Be like the farmer. Be patient. He waits for the rain in your life, okay? Wait for the rain, okay? There's going to be struggles, okay? There's going to be dry spells. You're, there's going to be some thorns. You're going to lose a leaf or two, okay? But that's okay. It's part of, it's not the end of the world. And what do I always tell you? What do I always tell you about drama? Keep the drama on the stage, okay? Keep the drama on the stage. I'm sure Mr. Farrow would be more than happy to take you back and have you put you back on the stage if you really need to have that drama. It's all part of growing up. It's all part of growing up. Be patient, okay? Learn patience. Go fishing. Ask fishermen, okay? They learn patience, okay? They learn patience. And one bit of advice, one final little bit of advice goes something like this. Don't forget about God. Don't forget about Christ. Don't forget about them. Unfortunately, some of you have already done that, okay? You forgot about them. Okay, they become second or third or fourth or not even on my list, okay? Not even on my list. I put God first. I put Christ first. He leads me. 
He leads me through my life. Not second or third or fourth or fifth. He's always there to lead me if I'm willing to be led. Hopefully you haven't done that. Keep your eyes open, okay? Keep your eyes open, keep your heart open, keep your mind open, okay? You never know when Christ is going to walk right up to you, okay? In the most ordinary places and situations and remind you that he's there, right there with you. Those two almost missed him in the gospel. They almost missed him. They were so worried about, we were talking about, talking about everything that was going on and then Christ was walking with them and they almost missed him. Don't be so bothered with the things that go on in the world that when Christ is present to you, that you miss him, okay? He may come to you in the form of a family member, may come to you in the form of a friend, may come as a classmate, come as a teacher, may even come as a stranger. A complete stranger may walk up to you and touch your heart somehow, and that's Christ. We take an opportunity to let you know that he's always there, okay? He reminds you of that. He reminds you of that. Keep your, heart, your eyes open, your heart open, and your mind open, okay? God has a plan for you, and this is all part of God's plan. Let your life unfold like a flower. You never know when Christ will be walking with you and will come to you like he did on the road to Emmaus. Amen. Amen. Well, well, there's one more thing, though. I did want to talk to you a little bit about what's been going on in the world, okay? This, all this upheaval, the protests and the chaos that's going on all over the world over racial discrimination. I spoke about this on Sunday at Mass here. I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch. You were probably sleeping or something else like that, but I'm just going to say what I had to say then. It's not just somewhere else, Canadians. It's not just in the U.S. It's right here. It's right here. There are protests all over this country. Proof enough that there's a problem here. There's a problem. Ask the protesters here in Canada. What happened to that man, George Floyd, was nothing more than simple murder, okay? In broad daylight by someone who was supposed to protect him. Society, protect us, the protector of society. But let me ask all of you this question, those of you who are sitting there. What did you feel? What did you really feel when you saw that, you heard that, okay, I'm sure that, me, I was sick. I'm sick over, I'm outraged, I'm, in, I'm, 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 in, I'm, I'm upset. San, the San Antonio coach, uh, 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 Greg Popovich said it best, he says, I'm embarrassed to be a white person. I'm embarrassed to be a white person. The U.S. Catholic Conference of Bishops came out very early and that said, we're all brokenhearted, sickened, and outraged to watch another video of an African-American being killed before our very eyes. And they went on to say that while it's expected that we, that we plead for peaceful, non-violent protests, and we certainly do, they also said we, we stand in compassionate support of the communities that are understandably outraged. Too many communities around the world fear their voices are not being heard. Their complaints about racial tension is unheeded. And they're not doing enough to point out that this deadly treatment is directly opposed to the gospel. It's directly opposed to the gospel. Racism is against the gospel. And they ended by saying, let each and every Catholic, regardless of their race, beg God to heal our deeply broken view of each other and our deeply broken societies. It's not just one country, it's around the world. This is not about the police, folks, okay? This is not about the police. I have seven members, my nieces and nephews back in New Jersey, seven of them work for law enforcement. Seven of them. That saying that all priests, that, that all, all, all police are to blame is like saying all priests are child abusers, okay? It's simply not true. Blaming all for the actions of a few gets at the heart of this matter, whether it pertains to the police, to priests, or people of color. Oh, they're all like that. Not true. We only judge people by the contents of their character and not the color of their skin or the uniform they wear. Someone said that quite a while ago. So what should we do? What do we do? I don't know. 
I don't know, okay? I'm sorry, but I'm at a loss as what to do, okay? I know one thing for sure, though. This is not a time for people of color to stand up by themselves or stand up for themselves. This is an opportunity for the white people to stand up and against racial discrimination in our society. This is a, not a time for the older people who are in government to make decisions. This is a time for the next generation to stand up and say, let us help and put our voice into the situation and the problems that plague our society. The only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to stand by and say, that's not my problem. That has nothing to do with me. That's all evil needs to win the day. We have to demand change. And change always, always, always starts with me. It starts with you. It starts with the individual. That's where it starts. Hopefully, you realize that you're the good people out there. You're the good people. And the stuff of what happened to George Floyd to continue will continue if the good people do nothing. We cannot, we should not, we will not ever let this happen again. We should not. We should all be embarrassed to let it happen once. I don't know what the future will be like. I wish, I hope, and I pray for you, for all of you, that you'll be part of the solution to the problems in our society. You'll be a solution. Each and every one of you are called to help to build up the earthly kingdom of God. And we do that as individuals by contributing to our society. It falls to your generation to join the conversation to right the wrongs, heal the wounds, and fight the good fight of justice. Pope Paul VI, the Pope in the 1960s says, if you want peace, you need to fight for justice. You need to fight for justice. You will only have peace when everyone feels that they are being treated justly and fairly. Gandhi, Gandhi he even said, be the change you want to be in the world. You want to see change in the world? Then start with you. That's what he said. If you change, the world changes. And the class of 2020, that is your job. That will be your job. You are the future that we're counting on. Change always begins with you. We're counting on you to heal and join the conversation to bring about the solutions, just solutions, to the problems that plague our society. This is what the future demands, and our demands come to fall upon each and every one of you, the class of 2020. We pray, we hope for you, that you'll contribute to the conversation in our society and make our society a better one than it is today. So may God bless you, and congratulations to everyone on the class of 2020. So with faith and trust in God our Father, knowing that he always hears our prayers, he knows our needs and desires, we present to him our petitions. And the response to our petitions, as always, is Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray today for all those who are graduating from Holy Cross. May the Lord bless them on their journey through this life and lead them to holiness and happiness. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our teachers and staff members who help us throughout this school year, that God may bless them for all the hard work and dedication they give, and help them to always remember that Jesus too came to serve, not to be served. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all our families and friends this day, that we may all grow closer to God and each other through faith and hope, and love in Jesus' name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these petitions, and those petitions which we hold and whisper in the silence of our hearts for the class of 2020. We make all of our prayers with trust and confidence through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
So blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, blessed be God forever. With humble spirits and contrite hearts may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in their sight be they be pleasing to you, Lord our God. So pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Gracious God, may our prayers together increase our faith in your companionship, our hope in your love, our love for your people. As we offer you this bread and wine, may we be strengthened in our friendship with you, now and forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with joy, we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, Father broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, Father, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity and love, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. We remember all those who have gone before us this year. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, the Apostles, Saints Peter, Francis, and Claire, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So our Savior's command, informed by his divine teachings, as brothers and sisters, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress and worry, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. So let us pray. Father, as we end one journey and begin another, let us go forth into the world as people of faith, hope, and love. Help us to hold fast to that which is good every day of our lives. Help us to strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, give dignity and respect to all we meet. Help us always to walk with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So on, once again, on behalf of Mr. Lavore, uh, Ms. Ms. Collins, Ms. Monaco, uh, on behalf of Mr. Mr. Mignello, Mr. Batalano, who's our cameraman today, um, on behalf of the entire staff and uh, teachers at Holy Cross, we take an opportunity to thank you all for joining. Once again, congratulations uh, to the class of uh, 2020. A big hug to all of you and congratulations to all of you. Um, continue to pray, continue to join. Church will be open soon, so take an opportunity to come and join us for communion. Um, you always, hopefully you've appreciated a little bit more what it's like to be away from something for so long, and hopefully you'll look and you'll continue to do that and see, uh, see that church and mass, um, even though they may not be so exciting like everything else in life, um, they are essential as, as, as food and air. Um, so take an opportunity when the church opens to come and pray and certainly participate in the Eucharist. So my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit, please bow your heads as we pray for God's blessings. There'll be four amens. May God the, of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessings. Amen. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen. Amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and may come happily one day to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our Mass, our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us, and God bless the class of 2020. Hi everyone. Father, these are crosses that have been donated by our Catholic School Council and they will be given to our graduates uh, during the grad parade that will take place on Monday, June the 22nd at 7 p.m. at our school. And we were hoping that you can bless them for us. Absolutely. I just so happen to have my blessing book. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed be your name, O Lord, for you are the font and source of all blessings. And you look to light upon the devout practices of your faithful people. Draw near, we pray, to these your servants, and as they use this symbol of their faith and devotion, grant that it may also strive to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has revealed his glory to us in Christ, bring your lives into conformity with the image of his Son, so that you may reach the vision of his glory. And may Almighty God bless these crosses, those who wear them and those who look upon them, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You get some too. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Good day, everybody. And welcome to all of you who are joining us on this very special occasion in honor of Holy Cross Catholic Academy's graduating class of 2020. I'd like to first of all thank Father Michael Corcione. I'd like to thank our chaplaincy team, Mr. Batilana, Mr. Mignella, Ms. Bruno, for organizing this very special, special event for each of you, our graduates. In the past few months, we've experienced a world that has turned our normal into something very, very different. A world that has forced us in many ways to view our daily lives through a whole new lens. Our graduates of 2020 have lived an experience that no other graduating class can say that they've lived. You have lived history and will soon make history. I have every confidence in your abilities that, despite the circumstances that we all find ourselves in in this present moment in time, the graduates of Holy Cross Catholic Academy will take what each has learned in their high school experience and follow in the footsteps of our loving Savior. You will each contribute to this world a wealth of good tidings, for each of you have been chosen to make a difference in this world. An unknown poet once wrote, How I wish there was some wonderful place where all of our mistakes, all of our headaches, all of life's challenges could be dropped like a shaggy coat at the door and never put on again. Well, there is such a place, and that is in God's heart. Give all your troubles, all your worries, all your joys, and give it to Him. Let go and let God. Take a moment to thank the Sacred Heart of Jesus for the many blessings in your life and for the many more that I wish upon each of you as you journey into your post-secondary destinations. One of my teachers, Ms. Mahala, informed me of a children's book that I think is most relevant, has a most relevant message for all of our graduates this year. And the book is entitled, You're Here for a Reason by author Nancy Tillman. You're here for a reason. You certainly are. The world would be different without you by far. Even the smallest of things that you do multiply and blossom far beyond you. You're here for a reason. It's totally true. You're part of a world that is counting on you, so don't be too worried if some days fall flat. Good things can happen even from that. Remember that next time a day goes all wrong to somebody else, you will always be strong. If not for your smile, your laugh, and your heart, this place we call home would be missing a part. Thank goodness for you, thank goodness times two. 
We just can't imagine a world without you. On behalf of Ms. Collins, Ms. Monaco, and the entire staff of Holy Cross Catholic Academy, I wish you, our graduates, congratulations on all of your accomplishments. We are Holy Cross family. God bless each of you. Know that you are loved. sacrifice and I join with my life I sing in vain tonight show me the words I say and the things I do make my life song sing bring a smile to you so let my life Song sing to you. Let my life song sing to you. I wanna sign your name to the end of this day, knowing that my heart was true. So let my life song sing to you. Give 
give my life A living sacrifice To reach a world in need To be your hands and feet Show me the words I say And the things I do Make my life song sing Bring a smile to you yeah. So let my life song sing to you Let my life song sing to you I want to sign your name To the end of this day Knowing that my heart was true So let my life Talk about 
about failing with families, all that we got Everything I would do, you were standing there by my side And now you gon' be with me for the last ride Don't let the light guide your way yeah. Hold every memory as you go And every road you take Without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it When I see you again We've come a long way From where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it When I see you again